Hi you two, hope you're all well and keeping safe. This week I'm doing the spelling investigation with you, so you know what that means. You either need a pen or a pencil and you need either some paper or if you've still got your home learning books, go and grab them. Pause the video and I'll see you shortly. Before we get going with this week's spellings, I want to congratulate 2SH on being the winners in year two. I'd also like to give a special shout out to the top three spellers in each year two class. Can you see your name? If so, well done and congratulations. And if you can't, try a little bit harder because you never know your name might appear on the Spelling Shed top spellers next week. This week, year two, we're going to look at spellings of words that start with the phoneme N. Now, there are two digraphs that make this N sound. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and see if you can remember them. Let's check. As you can see, these are our two digraphs. They make the N sound. Can you do that for me? Now that we've identified the digraphs that we need to use to make the N sound, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and see if you can find or remember any words that start with either of these digraphs. How many words can you find? Investigate. Off you go. How are you getting on with finding words that start with either of these digraphs? Which digraph would I need to use for this image? Which digraph do I need here? Which digraph do I need to use the N sound for this word? And how about this one? Have you used my clues to count how many letters it's going to take? And finally, have a look at what the girl's action is. I wonder if you know which digraph I need for this spelling. Have a check for me, year two. How did you get on? Do you notice where these digraphs appear in our spellings? That's right, they appear at the beginning of the word to help create that N sound. Right, year two, so we've had a look together at those digraphs. We've identified some spellings together. I want you to pause the video and see what other words you can find. When I'm checking or investigating for a spelling, I like to sound it out to see if I've got all of the correct letters. So, the word is knock. I'm going to sound it out. N -o -k. Knock. You will notice that I have two digraphs in this word. N -k. I have my phoneme here, and when I put them together, the word is knock. N -o -k. knock. To also help me remember that I need one of those digraphs that makes the N sound, I'm using my rainbow writing and you can see that this digraph is a different colour to my other letters. It's also helping me to remember that this appears at the beginning of the spelling. You two, can you read the word with me? And let's see if we can identify the sound buttons. That's right. N -o -m. I'll say that again with me. N -o -m. Gnome. Do you notice that this digraph here is split and it's also containing vowels? This makes it a split vowel digraph. Along with the rainbow writing, I also find drawing the boxes around my letters helps me to remember. And along with that, I still like to put my sound buttons to identify. So, N, I, F. N, I, F. Knife. Again, look, we've got another split vowel digraph. So here's our list of spellings to practice this week, year two. But I'm going to set you and me a challenge before we go off. 
we're going to play crosswords. So can you link your words to make a crossword? You're going to need to complete a grid by adding your words to link as many of the spelling words from the list as possible. Now, a top tip would be to practice joining them on a whiteboard first, because this way you can move them around. And remember, your words can be positioned horizontally, vertically and diagonally. Right, I'm going to have a go at the challenge. You're very welcome to join in with me or you can pause the video, have a go first and then compare yours to mine. I'm also going to use my different coloured pens to encourage me to use my rainbow writing that we talked about. It will mean that I can remember to use those different diagraphs at the beginning of the words. So let's have a look. I'm going to go for the word knock. And then I'm going to change because I've got my diagraph in one colour. Okay. To be fair, the first word is probably going to be the easiest to put on. Um, let's go for another one. So I've used this one. In fact, I'm going to put a little dot by it to show that I've used it. I'm going to go for this one here. I'm going to go for the word no. Now, I know it starts with the letter K. I know actually it needs to follow with the N because it needs to make that digraph. So I've got a couple of options here because if you look, I've got a K here. I've got an N here and I've also got another K here. Um, I'm going to try this one here. Now this time I need to go either horizontal or I need to go vertical. So I'm going to go horizontal. So this time, even though it hasn't got the rainbow there, I'm going to swap it around and do it in some different colours just so that every time that digraph stands out. Okay, I'm going to put a dot there. Right, let's try another one. Oh, now this is an interesting word here because it's got a different digraph at the beginning. And the word is nor. And I've got a W here now, so I know that needs to be at the end of the word. So I'm going to go for a different colour and I'm going to go vertically. So get that. Oh, squeeze that in. That digraph. Mm. Okay, so you can see how I'm getting on. And I've managed to use three out of my ten spellings. So I'm not doing too badly, you two. I'm going to keep going and do one more with you. Let's go for this word here, night. And we know from when Mrs Haynes did some delivery on homophones a couple of weeks ago, there are some different spellings. They sound the same, but they're spelt differently and they have a different meaning. So let's have a look at writing it first. And then let's see if we can identify what that word means. So I'm going to go over here nice and big. So I'm going to pop my spellings out of the way. But it is good to have them close by because it means I can be checking and making sure that I'm copying them accurately. Hmm. Quite impressed with that. So year two, in your parent mail this week, you've got your spellings attached. So feel free to have a go at my crossword challenge using those spellings or perhaps even use those words that you've investigated and found earlier on today. Another game that I like to play is using a die and each number represents an instruction that you need to follow. So have a look here at the different options and the different instructions that you will need to follow. Maybe you could come up with your own activities for each number on the die. Or perhaps you're learning some new exciting words through this year too. So maybe you need to know and understand the definition of each word. Perhaps you want to teach somebody else in your house about the new words that you've discovered. So just like my woggle here, what I've done for my friends is I've written some descriptions, but I haven't given them the answer to the spelling because I'm hoping that if they read one of my definitions, they'll be able to identify the word. I'm going to try this one with you guys, year two. What do you do with wool to make a scarf?
which is the correct spelling for that definition. Right, I'd like to play a game with you year two, and I know I've played this with some of you, but not all of you. It's called Blankety Blank. So you're going to need a piece of paper or a whiteboard, a pen and a pencil. You'll also need a copy of this week's spellings, which are attached in the parent mail. And then I'm going to read a sentence to you year two, and I'm going to leave out one word or maybe a couple of words that are from our spelling list, and you need to work out which is the missing word. So, shall we try one together? The dragon was asleep when the brave blank appeared in the dark, damp cave. So our missing word was night. The dragon was asleep when the brave knight appeared in the dark, damp cave. Surprisingly, the door was wide open and the little girl didn't need to blank. Surprisingly, the door was wide open and the little girl didn't need to knock. Three words to find in this one, year two. The blankety blank that the squirrel would blank on his fresh collection of fruits and nuts if he left them out in the garden. Which of these three spellings do I need? Did you manage to find all three? The gnome knew that the squirrel would gnaw on his fresh collection of fruits and nuts if he left them out in the garden. So now it's your turn, you two. Have a go, see if you can come up with some of your own sentences. Maybe you want to make them a little bit more silly than mine. And you know what? If you fancy filming yourselves and sending them to the teachers, we would love to have a go playing blankety blank with you. Maybe you fancy using the spellings as part of writing a story this week or a poem. Maybe you've got some questions that you want to write and think about how you can link them to our topic. I'm really, really impressed with what you're coming up with so far. So good luck and see you very, very soon.